I'm Captain Eddie Castlin. Ammo troops rule. That's right, ammo troops. Put us out in the bone docks with the worst equipment in the world, with the hardest mission in the world, and we've always brung our part. Brung our part. Whatever. All right. Hey, I'm bringing my part. I got a little project to show you. It's something you can do and you can score points on. Yeah? All you got to do, you got to watch. Now, if everything worked out, this is what we made today. See it? It's called a pin, a pin arrester. Yeah, well, if your wife does sewing, they have those needles and pins and all, and they pull them out when they're sewing, and they put them someplace. Where do you put them at? This is one. It's a pin arrester. It's where to keep them at. It's semi-magnetic. Oh, semi, okay. Um, it's made of, of wood. In fact, for this project, I'm going to start with some really great uh, hand-selected um, wood. This is, uh, got a phone number on it and everything. Uh, it says, uh, kiln dried by the best. Uh, it's 2 by 4 I just cut a little square of 2 by 4 Three and a half, three and a half. That's not two. That's not two. That's not four. All right. And I roughed it in. I'm just drawing it out. Now, as you take a look at this, because layout's important. Come on, get up here. Come on, get up here. All right. I've drawn the circle for the piece, and that is where it will end up at. But a lot of you folks don't have a bandsaw. So now what do we do? A nice lady I talked to today has got a chop saw. Let's take it over to the chop saw and just knock those corners off. Why? Turning eight sides is a whole lot better than turning four sides. So we're going to knock it off. Then what we're going to do, because not everybody's got a fancy chuck, I'm going to get us down to where if you've just got a faceplate, we can do it. But, you knew there was a butt coming, didn't you? I can't find a faceplate that fits my one way in the shop anywhere. It's here. It's bolted on something, and I keep looking around, and I think one day I will see it, the jig it bolted on to five, six years ago, and I'll be able to take that faceplate off and use it. But until then, I'm going to go over here to my one-way hold, strong hold chuck. I'm going to block of wood in, I'm going to face it off. A block of wood is about three inches across, maybe. All right, I faced it off nice and smooth. Now, I'm going to knock the corners off this, and then stick it on there to start the work. Now, before we get too deep into it, because I always tell you to do this, I did it. There it is. I drew it on a piece of graph paper. That is my 2 by 4 in profile. All right. Now what I'm going to create is, the first step is this little recess in the bottom to put a rare earth magnet, which I got at the hardware store. Then we're going to turn it over, or turn around, stick it on a lathe with the headstock being over here with double stick tape, and then we're going to put this recess in it. And all that's going to be based upon this drawing. Now you see the side, this has got a sloping side, this has got a curved side. That's all up to you. If you put a bead on it, you burn in an edge, uh, you do scalloping. I don't care, that's your choice. Let me show you how you get to the basic tool, uh, the basic one. It's a pin arrester. I started calling it a pin cushion. Management told me you can't call it a cushion because it's not soft. Let me tell you why I'm doing this. My buddy Ronnie, you know Ronnie, yeah. My buddy Ronnie's wife is getting into sewing. So we went by the house. This was not a good day for me. Went by the house, and you won't believe it, he's a wood turner. And he's sitting right there, and he says, Honey, how about the colors you're going to pick for this? I'm thinking, colors? What the hell are you doing? Then later on, he talked about the firmness of the stuffing in a pillow. Whoa! In the location of the new sewing cabinet. Whoa! In priority on how it's... Whoa! Man! I don't want to check his drawers for, for, for lace, but man, I tell you what, it scares me. So I'm coming up with this as a man project that Ronnie can do, and he can turn this, and then he's giving his wife something for her sewing. 
and probably redeemed a little bit of his manhood. Stick with me, we're going. I've got my two blocks prepared. See, I've rounded out one, and I have a point where it's the center, and I knock the corners off the other, I have a point where it's in the center. I want to hold on to this one. It's my backup piece. And this is very expensive 2x4, so I, you know, I don't want to be wasting it. I paid 88 cents for it. It was 8 feet long. They had some 77 cent pieces, but I want good stuff for what we're doing. I'm putting a piece or two pieces of double stick. I want to call it double stick duct, duct tape. Right? But it is a double stick tape made by Sure Tape, S H U R T A P E. Sure Tape. I used to be able to find it at Lowe's where they had all the other tapes and stuff. And the genius that works there, and really he's a genius, just listen to him a minute. They don't make it anymore. That was the thing. Okay. If Lowe's doesn't have it, doesn't mean they don't make it anymore just mean Lowe's doesn't have it. Now, put two pieces on. Remember, I've still got my little dot in the middle there. You can all see that. That's going my tail stock to center it up. And then I'm going to pull the strip off and I'm going to push it on and let it sit up for a few minutes. You, do we have to do, wait for all this? No, you don't have to wait for this. I'm going to put it on, bring the top block up, and then get back to you. Man. What I didn't show you was, but I did it. I put a couple of grooves in the face of this face plate, this block, so later on I can stick my scratch all in there or a screwdriver or something else to pry it off because this stuff really does hold. I almost said easily remove the blue backing tape. It ain't easy. It's, it's it, well, it's off. I'm going to let it set for a few minutes, okay? Before we get to turn, it's got to mention safety. That little piece right now is between centers, and I'm going to be able to stabilize it and trim it. But to be safe, I am going to wear a shield. I do wear my safety glasses. I am aware that this is a dangerous situation, and I'm going to be prepared for it. It's not a joke. It's not a game. And it's something you get hurt at. I'm going to set the lathe for about 400 RPMs and get it spinning. Shield up. Bring it in. I'm going to trip the bottom. a little embellishing right now before we get too far down the road. It's all in how you do it when you do it, okay? And it's not uncalled for, unnecessary. You know, get a little character to your piece. Right now I just knocked the sides down and got it round. I got a little tear in it, but I got some chitoins, which means it's, all it's not all torn up. I got a square bottom on it, and in that bottom is going to go this magnet to create the bottom. I showed you that on the sketch. Well, It'd be really good if I had a larger magnet and a, um, a, a better piece of wood. But we're doing this for a reason. All right, I'm going to take this and I'm going to soften that corner a little bit and get that bottom ready. But I'm going to put a little indentation on the side and burn in some lines to give it a little character, okay? Crank it up to speed. I soften it because I don't want to look like it's squatting down on a counter. Watch this now because I don't want you to mess up your work. Watch how you put detail lines in. I'm going to stomp a little bit and bring it down a little. All right. I want to put a couple of grooves on here. I'm using a Robert Sorby, I think it's a 6 millimeter. I don't know. It's it's a little stiletto and, and embossing thing. It's nifty. Watch. I'm going down.
I went down and I raised to put the burns in. I went straight in it with chat, chatter and jump and chase. When you go down and do that lift, then you don't get that chatter, jump and chase. Now, you gotta watch me because I forget to put my shield down sometimes. And that's not a good thing. It's really not. Okay. That's the cheapest embellishment I can do. It's two burn lines. I dug them in and then I burned them with a piece of piano wire between two balls. It's a little K type burner. I just held it on there, the speed of the lathe, and it burned it in. Now, I'm between centers and I'm going to hold this just on this end in a few minutes. But right now is my opportunity. I should sand this, sand this, and then put that depression in there. Do it now while it's between centers and it's safer. Get out my calipers and measure this little magnet and put it on there. I'd do better if I just draw a couple of rings and see which one gets closest because I'm going to fit it by size, by, by feel. And I want it to be really, really tight. So I'm just going to cook in a few lines until I get the one that I think, okay, that's going to be it. That's where I'm going to cut to. Remember, I'm now duct taped on this face block or this block of wood. If you got a face block, it's a face block. Here's the deal. You make a heavy cut, you pick it up off the floor. Make your cuts light and sweet. Let the tool do its job. Reach around from the other side to take the rest of it out. We're all on page one. I did this with the fanel gouge and I put sharp corners on using my little parting tool. Now I have this rig a cut to accept that pretty close, huh? Really close. So well, I can put a bolt right through it. No, it can't. All right, now this is ready to go around the other way. But do I want to do that right now? Not really. Before I double stick tape on this to put it on this side and I change this chuck, I do want to seal this up, so I'm going to do a little quick, little quick fix. I'm going to seal it up using CA glue, bring my speed back down about three or four hundred RPMs, and I'm going to put the CA on it to seal this area off. That allows the tape to stick better. Now, I'm not going to stick the tape on wet CA. It's going to be, well, that's dry by now. But I'm going to put a little bit of it on, and that's going to cure up this piece. And that lets me get a little bit ahead on the finishing also. Just drip drabs of it. We should have told me to put my gloves on because, look, I got stuff stuck in my hands. You didn't tell me a thing. I'm working alone here. Okay, I got WD-40. I can get it off. The technical thing. See how deep that groove is right there? Well, that groove will match up with this line or just a little bit below that line. All right, here's the deal. If I cut this side below this line, I want to be able to see the ground. Don't want that. When I cut this side, I want to stay about a quarter inch thick. So I'm going to say that's going to be my target right there. Right? right between those two marks, captivate is my target. That's when I put the dish in, that's what I'm working towards. Got now, I'm going to get my scratch.
scratch off and knock this thing off. Good old fashioned one dollar action. There we go. Let's see what See, I went right into a joint or crack I put on the faceplate so I could pry it off. This stuff really, that sure, sure brand tape really does hold. All right, there we go. Now peeling it off. That is step one. Step two, I want to change my faceplate right here to match that tendon. Then we're going to glue it up again. Now, that was a beautiful piece of wood, but it was a scrap block and we had to use it. Oh, All right, I put that tendon on there. That tendon fits into the socket right nicely, just about snug. In fact, in a good day, I'd probably try to turn this like this, but I'm going to put the double stick tape right here. Now, here's the other deal. This shoulder back here, you can see the little crack back there? All right, that's on purpose. This is deeper, this is longer than this is deep because I want my bearing to be here on this surface, not on this surface. I want it to be here. So that's going to tape up now. Now remember, I sealed this with CA because I want it to bond up really nice. I've got the double stick tape on here, and that was. S H U R E T A P E, and I got it at Lowe's. Don't know if you'll be able to get it there, but I found it on Amazon also. So I'll bring up the tail sock, put a little pressure here, and then crank down a little bit, for about 15 20 pounds. I'm going to let it rest for about five minutes. When I crank it back up, I can redo it to finish and start putting the dish in. First, I'm going to let it rest a little. Let it set up for a few minutes. I turned it back on just now. I got a little harmonics, which means it wasn't exactly balanced. But it's not enough to worry about, and it won't come off because I sized it wrong. These are all going to be slices. I'm going almost vertical to get started. Twist and pull a little bit. I'm going to leave that tub there for a few minutes until they get the same shape. I'm about one fourth of the way to the shape I want. This is junk wood. But we're going to sand it out and make it look good. I'm ready now. Now watch the tool as I work it. See the paddle? The paddle is going straight across the flute to give you an idea of what's happening with the flute. Here we go. You see what's happening? I am riding this flute and I'm holding it almost dead vertical, which means I'm not getting aggressive. A moment like this is going to be aggressive. Radically different. Watch. quality of the cut is radically different also. You see the tears? Because that, when I'm doing it with the flat, I'm pulling them out. I'm tearing the stuff out. But I'm doing it up on the edge where I can control where this bevel cuts and 
how it cuts, then I'm only cutting with one little sharp corner, and that's the one I want to make the pass on. Everything seems to be stopped shaking a little bit. Look at the tears. Because I went in with that cut, that open cut like this flat. And it cut, moved a lot of stuff. It looked great on video. Poor shearing's flying all over the place and everything. But what was it doing to the wood? Well, I don't want that to happen. So I'm shielding up and I'm about, um, oh, let me, you're just going to ask me. I'm at about 1,100 RPMs. I don't have all those tears. That was the goal, not to have all those tears. I don't need to sand them out. I got a little ring or stuff in there. But I can get rid of that real quick. One more pass. The goal was no tear outs. If I can only read or tell red is videotaping and green is not. I had some marks. So I went back down to 120 grit paper. And I got the marks out. You can see, I got a little mark right on that burr, on that thing right there. And that means that there's some imperfections down in this bottom. And I want them to go away. And I want them to go away now uh, with this 120 grit paper. Then I'm going to step it up through the, cor through the course and see how it works out. Now, is that really necessary? In my heart, it is. I'm turning out the best I could turn out. That's everything I turn out, that's how it's got to be. If it doesn't match your best, that's okay. One way or the other. See, I'm going to go a slow delay down because if I'm sanding with this right now, I'm at 400. If I'm sanding with this 400 and starts loading up like this, that's only burnishing, it's not sanding. So I've got to bring the speed of the lathe down to where I don't run the, the lumber into the sandpaper so hard and I let the sandpaper actually do its job, what it's supposed to do. Now if it starts to load down, I know the paper's dying because it has a light, a light that lasts just so long. You can't get any more out of them than you want or you deserve. But we're going to buff it all the way to 400. I've got some six, eight, and thousand in here, but I'm not going to go crazy. Oh, yeah, I am. But I'm going to get this thing about 400 and put a coat of sealer on it. Okay, I cheated a little bit. I'm not going to do sealer. I went and got the CA glue. Starbond, very thin, ultra thin. And I'm rubbing on some coats of ultra uh, Starbond on it. Give it a real fast, down and dirty finish. But I want you to see something. You want to get up real close here to take a look at it. You see the tears? See, this is 2 by 4 from Home Depot. Oh, probably those. No tears and no rips because we sliced it out. Slice cutting. What was in charge of safety over here? We've got to talk about this. That's not supposed to happen. I forgot. My WD-40 is right there. I was supposed to spray, pardon me, spray myself a little WD-40 before I used it so it wouldn't stick as bad. And I forgot. All right, now we got this base coat on. Um, I've got it, the, the CA all over it. I'm going to pull her off. Well, I should buff it with the, uh, um, what do you call them? Oh, God, they're right here. Rillo pads.
Then I can put a little wax on it. And that thing is slick. That is nice. That's where it wants to be. That's right. Fingers. Alright, now we're going to eat this off here. Remember, I put it on double stick tape. But, toop, it's off. And it's freed up. Look at that. Now I'm going to take my little magnet and put my magnet in there, put some hot glue on it, hold it, and then when she drops her pins in there, they're going to stay in there. They won't go spilling all over the floor. Really, it would been nicer if I had 2 by 6 but I couldn't spend all that money on a little project like this. Alright. We've had a little fun. We've cured some mills. I got to turn wood. Play with the ornamentation, use my fingernail gouge, pretty much only my fingernail gouge, um, because it slices so nice. All right, that's it. That's a pen holder, pen arrester. Got to get this right, pen arrester. That's it, folks. I'm going to go back to in unit deal. I'm going to go back to making shavings. Take care. Be good.